Oh magical block, please tell me what I should be doing. Subscribe to Raigai Gaming. Thank you. Hey guys, what's up? This is Raigai Gaming here today, back with another Roblox scripting tutorial. And today we are going to be doing mouse over text. So you can see as I run around mousing over things, um, these little words will pop up describing the objects to me. So I'm going to teach you how to do that. So the way this script works is it actually uses just a text label GUI. So what you're going to want to do is just make a text label and put it in a screen GUI, either one you already have or one you make specifically for the mouse over text. Um, and in, inside of that label, you're just going to want to put the local script. Now for the label, you're probably just going to want to make it look exactly how you want your mouse over to look. You can change the colors and everything via the script, but it is always just easier to edit it in the open view. And once I find the visible property, I will be able to show you. So as you can see, this is mine up here. So I just have some black text, which I probably should change it to white because black is kind of hard to see. So let's change this to white. And then it should be easier to see as we're running around mousing over things. Let's see. So let me just run around. Yep, that looks way better. And so basically, yeah, that's just gonna what you're going to want to do. Find something you like and then just make it invisible so that it won't be seen while you're playing your game. Once you have what you like, go ahead and insert a local script into the text label. So before we get into the meat of the script, you can see here that I have three if statements. This is because the script actually works three different ways. So the first way you can have it work um, you can have it all three, just two, just one, however you'd like. The first way it works is it just looks for anything that is a model and then just tells you the name of that model. So if, as you can see when I was running around, just things that are regular parts like this. This doesn't have a model, so it doesn't have any mouse over text. The spawn location isn't in a model, so it doesn't have any mouse over text, but things like this it shows the name of the model. So for these buttons and this door, the model's name is door. For this windmill, the model's name is windmill. For this, the model's name is by pile of bricks, and so on. The second thing our script will highlight is other players. So you can see here, when I point my mouse at another player, I'll also get their name as a mouse over text. And this can be useful for RPGs if you want to show like their level. Um, or it could also be useful for group places if you want to show their rank or maybe you could sh even show their discord role. I won't be getting into all that in this video because that's pretty complex stuff and I don't want to deal with that right now and this is just supposed to be a simple tutorial. So right now we just have the script showing the other players names. And then lastly, I kind of have to show you into the, hopefully I can see it since I'm on a client. But this part right here, you can see I have it highlighted. This isn't in a model, but you can see that it still has a mouse over text. That's because we are we have a string value inside of it called mouse over. And so this script will also look for anything that has mouse over string value inside of it. And it will just display whatever the value is for that. So that's why we can get this text on just this regular block that isn't part of a model. So now that we've gone over the different ways you can use this, I'll show you how it works now. So basically, really simple script. Seriously took me like two minutes to code. Um, first, and that was mostly just typing, it wasn't even thinking. <laughs> so first you just get the players just by using game get service players dot local player. So this will just get a reference to your client, your local player, the player that's playing. And then you also get a reference to their mouse just by calling get mouse on the player. Really simple function, really easy to use. Then whenever the mouse moves, so we set up a listener on the move event on the mouse, we first go ahead and set the GUI label's position to be that of the mouse. So script.parent, whenever you see it in this script, it's referencing the text label. 
I was- I probably should have used a variable, but I just typed script.parent every time because I don't really care. So whenever you see script.parent, it's referencing the text label. So, we're just setting its position to be that of the mouse, plus a little bit of an offset. So I have it go 10 in the X direction and 5 in the Y. You can mess with these however you want, just to get it looking the way you want it. And then we be sure to set the GUI labels prop visible property to false. That way every time we move the mouse it will initially start out as false. So that way you won't see the label moving around with your mouse. So the next thing we do is we go ahead and get the target of the mouse. So this is anything that the mouse is pointing at. It can't be like the sky or anything. It actually has to be pointing a block for the target value to contain an object. And what we do is we check to see if we actually have a target. Because if you don't do this, you can actually break your script if the player points their mouse at the sky or at any part that is locked. And then we also make sure that the target has a parent. Once we make sure those checks are in place, like I said, we just have the three different methods for displaying the text. So this first one is to display the name of a model. So if a part is in a model, it will always display the name of its model. So you saw here, like for example, I have this car. So when I mouse over this car, it won't say part or whatever, it will say car. Because that's the name of the car's model, as you can see right here. Oh, it is actually... Yeah, see car, and all the parts are in car, so it'll say car. Next, we go ahead and get the one that displays the name of other players. So what we do is we look for the humanoid root part, and if there is one, that means that we're pointing at a player. So what we want to do is display the player's name and set the GUI label to visible, really simple. And lastly, we have the condition for the objects containing the mouse over string object. So all we do is we check to see if it contains something called mouse over. If it does, then we'll go ahead and grab the text from that object and we'll make it the same as the GUI label so that we can display whatever text we want. Now, as far as customizing this script, all you have to do is delete or comment out different section of the script to get to what you want. So to comment a section out, you just do dash dash bracket bracket and then delete the brackets that it auto completes for you and then just go close bracket close bracket. So now this section of code won't run. So now I won't get any GUI labels popping up whenever I go over anything that has a mouse over string object inside of it. So if I was to go into the game and point my mouse at that block that says subscribe to Rai Guy Gaming, nothing would happen now. And then if I want it back, I can just uncomment it or I can just delete it all together, of course. Another thing you might want to keep in mind is you can also change the order to determine the priority. So let's say I have a block like this one that has a string object inside it called mouse over. So we'll be displaying this text, but let's say I also put it in a model. I'm not going to do it, but which one do you think, which text do you think it would display? Well, because of the way the scripts work, it will always display whatever executes last. So it will actually display the mouse over text, so whatever is in the string object. So if you don't want that to be the case, you can always change the order of these statements and whatever is last will be the highest priority. So if you just say swap this one and this one, and then if I was to put this in a model, say this trampoline, it would say trampoline instead of whatever this object value is. Anyways guys, I hope that all makes sense. Um, I am a little rusty with these as I looked and I haven't done a video for three months, so I hope you can forgive me. Um, I hope it made sense. If it doesn't, I'd be happy to help you out in the comments. I'd also be happy to help you out with any errors you may encounter. 
you can always leave any errors in the comments or come and join my discord and there will be a link for that down in the description. As far as the script goes, you'll be able to find that in a paste bin link down in the description. Anyways guys, that's going to do it for me today. Again, please excuse the sloppiness of this video, it has been a while since I've done one. And I hope you all have a really nice day and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.